In my last video, I discussed the main agenda of the coming New World Order. The main agenda coincides with the answer to the question, do we all worship the same God? And to briefly summarize, the answer to this question is no. But the world is still preparing for a one world religion nonetheless. This religion will be a unifying of beliefs, as long as we are not unified in the doctrinal foundation of the Bible, following the ways and commands of the true God of Israel and belief in his son whom he sent, Yahshua the Messiah. And this is the overall goal of the New World Order, having us worship Satan as God. But along with this goal, there is also prophecy of a world government. Many people have called this a conspiracy theory for many decades, but only if you have been asleep to the many events and discussions and agreements that have taken place over the past decades, particularly after 9-11, then this is the only way you could believe that this coming world government is still a conspiracy that is unfounded and not true. A world government is in the making, and it is currently waiting for the next crisis in order to fully come into power. But all of that can just be words that are easily ignored or debated against if these words are not being properly explained. You see, though none of these plans are done in private, and they are all in plain sight to see, we have been so programmed to focus only on the news that our mainstream media gives us that we only focus on the points that they want us to know. And while the world moves in one direction in unity with major goals in place, it's the unknowing general public that are blind and only can see what is directly in front of them. We have been conditioned to be reactive instead of proactive. And while they are conditioning us slowly to accept this world government, they are not directly telling us that it is coming. And when it does come, the world will be begging for it without proper understanding of what it truly is. Now make no mistake, it is coming. There is nothing we can do to avoid it or stop it. This video is not made for you to revolt against it or spark some kind of revolution because you cannot stop Bible prophecy. You can only determine what side of it you will be on. And so while the majority of us have been unknowingly programmed to accept this when the time is ready, I believe that there should be more of an understanding of what is in front of us and what is to come. Like I said in the last video, because we are so close to this agenda becoming a reality, the lines can seem very blurred. So I want to put things in perspective from an opposing side. Let's begin. Now, when I began the understanding of the one world religion, I started with the history that went all the way back to the first known civilization of the Sumerians in Mesopotamia. In that understanding, we saw the beginning of the first one world religion. This was the beginning of paganism when the known world wanted to challenge Yahweh. Now, while this was the beginning of the one world religion, this is also the beginning of the first world government. King Nimrod reigned securely and all the earth was under his control and all the earth was of one tongue and words of union. They aspired to ascend to heaven and fight God. This was the first world government never seen again. Like I said in the first video, everything we are witnessing is about creating another form of this, but in order so that Satan is in complete dominion of this world. I repeatedly bring it back to this point in time because it is an extremely important point in history. Now, I am not an expert in Freemasonry. It could never be because I will never be a Mason. But based on much of their writings, this event at Babel is very important to their beliefs. They have a lot of literature that has been distributed over time that you can understand the basics of their belief without understanding their secrets, which they hold very tight and deep. In Albert Mackey's Encyclopedia of Freemasonry and its Kindred Sciences, he writes, At Babel, Oliver says that what has been called spurious Freemasonry took its origin. That is to say, the people there abandoned the worship of the true God, and by their dispersion lost all knowledge of his existence, and of the principles of truth upon which Freemasonry is founded. Hence, it is that the old instructions speak of the lofty tower of Babel as the place where language was confounded and Freemasonry lost. Now, I should always note that when they're talking about the worship of the true God, it is not Yahweh, but Lucifer, their light bearer. 
but the Tower of Babel is essential to their beliefs. Their goal is to complete this challenge of Yahweh again, more completely. And this is an unspoken goal of the New World Order, in which is labeled today as a conspiracy theory. And it is. But just because it is a conspiracy does not mean that it's not being planned and carried out. So let's understand what the Bible has to say about a world government. Like with the prophecy of the one world religion, this world government is spoken about in Revelation chapter 13. But mainly it is given in the book of Daniel chapter 7. Now I speak about this in greater detail in my Revelation series part 5. So if you would like a more in-depth study on this subject, please watch that video. But in Daniel chapter 7, Daniel's dream was interpreted. And in verses 23 and 24 of the chapter, it explains the fourth beast. It says, The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom, and another shall rise after them. He shall be different from the first ones and shall subdue three kings. And this is the major Bible prophecy that explains of the coming world government. The fourth beast that is different from all other kingdoms before it, and it would devour the whole earth. I mean, that seems pretty self-explanatory to me. This kingdom that is different than all other kingdoms before it will devour the whole earth. Hence, where we see a world kingdom. But we don't talk that way today, which is why we say world government. This fourth beast of Daniel and the beast that came out of the sea in Revelation chapter 13 are the same. And like the scripture says, the dragon, who we know as Satan, gave the beast its authority. Now, as we understand what is going on in world events, we can clearly discern that this beast is the United Nations. Now, I know there are many that like to say that the beast is the Roman Catholic Church, but that does not completely fit. The Roman Catholic Church is not fit to devour the whole earth. In Russia, they have a completely different but powerful church. And China, as well, is not in control by the Vatican. The Roman Catholic Church is not set up to be a world government, and the world would not respect this form of government, especially with the scandals of sexual abuse that still plagues them today. The United Nations was built for this goal, though. There currently is an agenda that is calling for more control and governance by the United Nations. This is what we know to be the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, also known as Agenda 21. We have seen events like the Global Citizen Festival that show that there is now an international government that the population are citizens of now. I speak about this in my video about the 10 reasons that were in the end times. You see, they hold this Global Citizens Festival every year. Let me ask you, what is a citizen? According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a citizen is a member of a state, a native or naturalized person who owes allegiance to a government and is entitled to protection from it. So, in order for you to be a citizen of somewhere, there must be a government that you owe allegiance to and are entitled to protection of. So being a global citizen means there must be some form of global government. And this is just how subtle they are with telling you what time it is. They are telling you it's here without saying it directly, but our subconscious are being prepared for it. And this is what the fourth beast kingdom will be. It will be like a revived Roman empire, which is why we see the Roman symbol of peace on the United Nations logo, the olive branch. It's like a revived Roman empire because it will have one ruler, like an emperor. But like Rome did, they allowed the nations they conquered to keep their identity, just as long as they submitted to the rule of Rome. The United Nations will not be a conqueror, but the nations of the world will gladly surrender to one body of governance, rather than having many world leaders that can provoke war and conflict. The world will denounce the populist ideas of leaders like Donald Trump and unite under a common goal for the world and not place one country above the rest. This is part of the agenda that we see in effect using Donald Trump as a scapegoat for uniting the world. In either case, the United Nations is a part of the complete symbolism of the beast found
found in Revelation chapter 13 and the fourth beast of Daniel chapter 7. Its authority will be granted by Satan. And this is a brief explanation based on the Bible. Like I said, please watch part five of the Revelation series for a more in-depth study. But maybe you want to debate this and say none of this is true. Understanding current events will reduce a great deal of skepticism from even the greatest of deniers. Let's review and understand what has transpired over the past decade. The thing about understanding this is that it helps understand our current world better. You will understand political issues and why they are being raised. Why you see certain agendas being pushed locally, statewide, and nationwide. You will start understanding the agendas on our television programs and how they subtly introduced this world government to that us. That doesn't sound totally terrible. Diane, you're not buying this. Ruby, you don't think that women deserve equal pay? They deserve more. And I know you wouldn't let a man talk down to you. Now, you know ain't no man talking down to me. And you'd fight for a woman to be able to make her own decisions. With my fist. Grandma, mm. you're a feminist. The mistake that we make is looking at the overall goal of world government. And then we say, because we don't see this full power structure in existence yet, that means that it is far from us. For the majority, people are only looking for the end, but not really watching for the progression. You see, the world will not just one day move from the old world order to the new world order by surprise. It one day may seem like that, but it does not happen this way. Along with changing the world structure and getting the legal and political authority with acceptance by all nations, they also need the world population to be ready to accept it. This does not happen all at once, but by a slow process of mental transformation, mental conditioning. It is something that is slowly introduced over time that is allowed to marinate in the minds of the world. The walls between the countries with the most and those with the least cannot stand. The walls between races and tribes, natives and immigrants, Christians and Muslims and Jews cannot stand. These now are the walls we must tear down. I want to tell you something right now. I wish you could see what I see. Because when I look out at all of this, I say this is how you change the world. You don't have to wait for anybody. You can do it on your own. We need a movement of global citizens, from world leaders to people everywhere, to help solve the world's biggest problems. I've signed up. I hope you will too, and encourage your own network of people to become global citizens. We must act as one. I am a global citizen. 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 Am a global citizen. Join us. So that when major chaos occurs, they are simply able to suggest the solution and we will agree and matter of fact, even beg for it. Another major barrier to understanding this coming world government is accounting for the role of the United States. Because the United States is the major world power right now and has been for the last 70 years or so, it's hard for many to come to terms with this coming world government without the United States in control. For many, all they can see is what they have seen for their lifetimes a world controlled and dominated by the United States. And so, it's hard for many to come to terms with a world government run by the United Nations and not the United States. That's also why people love to believe that the Antichrist is from the United States, because it's all about who's in power. But this is what bringing in the old world order into the new world order is. In this new world order, no nation will be above another, and no national currency will be above another. All of those ideas are ideals of populism. And in the new world order, there will be no place for populism. No place for nations prioritizing themselves over the rest of the world. And yes, together, we will make America great again. So in understanding what's to come, there must be a different thought of the role of the United States. And that reality is not hard to see when reviewing the current world we live in objectively. You have the rise of China as a second world power, the diminishing influence of the United States in world affairs. There have been the emergence of Russia and China, assisting nations around the world more than ever before, taking the place of the United States. We have the imminent devaluing and rejection of the United States dollar and its swift payment system used around the world. 
You have the world changing its reliance on oil and Saudi Arabian oil becoming a publicly traded company, which can change its agreement on payment of oil only United States dollars, which is a big reason why the United States dollar is a global currency today. You have the United States population on verge of civil war between the haves and the have nots, racial tensions, political tensions with Democrats versus Republicans, social tensions between LGBT and those that oppose it, and even religious tensions. While there is also tremendous escalating national debt that is continuously rising, never falling, with no consideration or answers to solve it. Yeah, it's a lot of problems. And with all of these problems, there's obviously a change coming in the world order. And many are not mindful of it because they can only imagine a world that the United States dominates. But when the United States loses its global power and significance and the world moves away from the United States dollar, which has been overprinted and oversupplied, there will be a new order that arises from the ashes. And this new order is the fourth beast, the kingdom that will devour the whole earth. But like I said, this does not happen all at once, but by a slow process of legal, political, and mental transformation. And so the question is, has this started to happen yet? Or are they still planning in secret with no actions? The answer is that yes, it has already started to happen. And when this is understood, then it makes the matrix a little easier to discern through. Let's start with this. In the year 2000, leaders from 189 countries agreed on a vision for the new millennium. They wanted to end extreme poverty in all of its forms. So they made a list of eight goals called the Millennium Development Goals. And they wanted to achieve these goals in 15 years. One of the leading organizations working to fulfill these goals has been the United Nations Development Program, or UNDP. We're present in more than 170 countries and territories. We championed the goal so that people everywhere would know what they were and how people could do their part. We funded projects that helped fulfill the goals. So in September 2015, they agreed on a new set of goals to help finish the work we all started in 2000. The new goals are called the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. We have made significant progress in the last 15 years, and we think there's plenty of room for hope, for action, in the next 15 years. Today, the world is more connected by technology. We know more about how to balance the three pillars of sustainable development, social progress, economic growth, and environmental protection. However, our climate is changing. Our planet is transforming. And there are more people on Earth than ever before. We at UNDP believe everyone can have enough of what they need living within our planetary boundaries. And we are working around the world to make this happen. Our goals to reach by 2030 are to eradicate extreme poverty, protect our environment, and much more. UNDP has 50 years of experience working with countries to make this a more prosperous, healthy, inclusive, and sustainable world. Join us. Okay, so you see, one thing I had to realize when understanding this world from the mindset of a believer is that though the Bible speaks against these things in the world is not going to be presented to us from that perspective. It's going to be presented in a way that seems beneficial and in our best interest. For example, I believe the majority of the world has heard of the mark of the beast. And though there is a debate on what it actually will be, I don't think there is anyone that speaks on it as a positive thing. But we all know that it is coming, regardless. Now, do we expect the world to market it as the mark of the beast when it's being promoted? Like, everybody, come and take the mark of the beast. Absolutely not. This will not happen. It will only be marketed as a solution to a problem that only has benefits. I can't believe he just paid with his hand. Like, you just literally put your hand up and you're good to go. Like, that's crazy. So if we do not use discernment and have understanding, we can look at things that are intended for pure wickedness and made for satanic intentions as things that are beneficial for us and just part of a changing world. Does that make sense? My point is that as you hear many things being presented today, you only are being made to consider the benefits and the good that they are doing, but you are not recognizing what it all may mean from a biblical perspective. Like in presenting the sustainable development goals, who would object to getting rid of poverty? zero hunger, clean water, 
and good health and well-being. I mean, all of that sounds wonderful, but what's not being considered is what vehicle is being used to provide this and what it all means for the future. So let's understand what is actually going down. What is the United Nations? Let's get it directly from them. This is on their actual website. The United Nations is an international organization founded in 1945. It is currently made up of 193 member states. The mission and work of the United Nations are guided by the purposes and principles contained in its founding charter. Okay, so the 193 nations of the world are all members of the United Nations. The whole world is a part of this organization. Let's talk about what they do. The UN maintains international peace and security, protect human rights, deliver humanitarian aid, promote sustainable development, and uphold international law. These powers are given to it by the UN Charter, which is considered an international treaty. As such, it is an instrument of international law, and UN member states are bound by it. It should be understood, this is the framework of a world government, but it has not fully stepped into its role. There are many different parts of the United Nations, and to explain it in full would require a much longer video. So let me just explain the main crux of what should be understood right now. That is, the Sustainable Development Goals. I'm an American, and we are currently in election season where candidates are debating their platforms to become the new leader of the country. One reason why it's easy for me to understand the game that is being played is because I understand the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. In 2015, all the nations of the world signed this agreement of goals that all nations of the world are working towards. When reviewing these goals and then reviewing the political agenda of the presidential candidates, it's easy to see that they are all moving within the constraints of the Sustainable Development Goals, but they just make it seem as if it's their thoughts or what the people are asking for. But they are just debating the agenda of the Sustainable Development Goals and advocating implementing them into law. This is why socialism is being presented more substantially than ever before. If you study and review the Sustainable Development Goals and then review the platforms of the Democratic candidates, you will see that none of their agenda is in opposition of the Sustainable Development Goals. And for the many people who are strong Donald Trump advocates and believe he is slowing down the New World Order, they also do not understand this complete agenda. Because while Donald Trump is said to be many things and against many things, one thing he is not against is the Sustainable Development Goals. He has pulled out of many agreements within the world, but he is still on board with the Sustainable Development Goals. And he also actively participates in this United Nations global governance structure. The point is that all of this is about a world government that has already manifested but not fully come into full reality for the masses. And it will not happen until the old order is done away with. The next major crisis of this world will bring about a complete world government and its world leader. The unfortunate reality is that the majority of the world is just simmering, waiting for the global elite's next step to be brought to the light. The majority is just waiting for a change and a leader. And this will all come from the beast coming into power. Now, this particular video is only discussing this world government, but there also is a leader of this world government that we are being prepared to accept as well. You know, people can deny all they want about the validity of the Bible. You can decide you're not going to worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You can decide that you're not going to believe on Yahshua the Messiah sent to take the penalty of our sins and redeem us to the Father. But it still does not change what is happening in our current world. All you must do is do your own research on the United Nations and the Sustainable Development Goals, also known as Agenda 21. See how they have been working on implementing these goals in your current nation. Opportunity for all on a healthy planet. In short, we have set our sights on a fair globalization. The good news is that the 2030 agenda is coming to life. Governments, north and south, have begun integrating the goals into national plans and strategies. This is all about a world government 
and it's not a coincidence. It's no coincidence that we see the symbolism everywhere. When they rebuilt the World Trade Center, instead of two towers, what did they build? Yes, one tower, which is called One World Trade Center. No coincidence. If you look at American airline planes, they call themselves the One World Alliance and put it on their planes. It's everywhere. If your eyes are open, you will see the symbolism continuously. So, I've first broken down what a one world religion is. Now I have broken down what this world government is. I've shown where all of this is found in the Bible. But yet, undoubtedly, there are still people who deny the validity of the Bible and refuse to believe in it. I've made this video because I want you to understand that there is only one option if you do not want to partake in this coming new world order. And that is submitting to the true God of Israel and belief in his son whom he sent. You must repent of your sins and become born again. You must receive eternal life. You must have a personal relationship with our Father. Bible prophecy is upon us, and I understand that it's easier to ignore all of this and just hope for the best. But this strategy will not reap you happiness. You are just delaying the inevitable. It's easy to write all of this off as unfounded conspiracy theory, but that view is clearly based upon ignorance. I did not create these events or these organizations. I am just aware of them and what they are doing. And I desire that you are awake and aware as well. These subjects are very deep and I'm only hovering surface level to bring awareness. Like I said in the beginning of this video, you cannot stop this from happening. All you can do is determine what side of it you will be on. This new world order is upon you. The change is happening and they are preparing us for it. Don't live your days in ignorance and focus on sports, your career, video games, social media, celebrity gossip, political news, etc., etc., while ignoring the course and direction this world is clearly on. I don't know if we have a week, month, years, I don't know. But what I do know is that the world will not be able to sustain itself in its current condition for much longer. A global reset is a must. It has to happen. A financial collapse is imminent. The dollar will not sustain its value and use forever. War between the most powerful nations is brewing and wickedness is in abundance. I wanted you to know that there is a world government that is formed and waiting for the right time to come into power. If you have gotten this far in this video, you now are aware and informed. The only question is, what do you do? Come to our Savior now. Find Him and submit to His will. Don't let temporary distractions keep you from eternal treasures. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it with others. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. With all the changes happening in the world, if you do not see this channel on this platform any longer, Elohim willing, these messages will still be given directly on my website, still uploaded every Friday. Please subscribe on my website to receive email notifications. The link is in the description box. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel on Facebook and Instagram. As always, I'd like to thank all who donate and contribute to this ministry. Your donations are truly a blessing to this ministry and help very much. Thank you for your love and support and letting our Father use you. You are truly a blessing, and I really appreciate your support. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again, everyone, for watching. I love you all.